Hello my people, let me start by thanking you guys for the continued support you have shown me in this channel since we started. Thank you for the close to 7,000 subscribers, road to 10,000 subscribers and do appreciate your support. Please guys continue subscribing, liking and sharing our videos so that they may reach as many people as possible. Let's go back to our topic whereby we have been discussing about uh, neonatal sepsis. And today we are going to discuss about the treatment modalities available for neonatal sepsis. I hope uh, everybody understood what neonatal sepsis is and uh, up to this point I know everybody has a knowledge and can tell what neonatal sepsis is. When it comes to treatment uh, there is this point I want you people to get that uh, early treatment increases the likelihood of recovery. So, if you treat your child very highly for neonatal, space, uh, neonatal sepsis, the chances of survival, because this uh, condition can be fatal or can cause death or can cause serious complications. So, when this condition is managed or treated highly in advance, it increases the chances of, of recovery. People with uh, sepsis require close monitoring and treatment in an hospital setup. As I have said, this disease can cause uh, serious complications. That's why people or infants with sepsis require hospital management or hospitalization and close monitoring. So let's come to medications. A number of medications can be used to treat this kind of uh, uh, infection. Number one, we have uh, antibiotics. Depending on labo uh, laboratory tests, as, I, uh, uh, as, I, as we discussed in the diagnosis part of it, the doctor will always send uh, the patient or the infant for laboratory tests. Then when the tests are out or when the results are out, the doctor will be in a position to determine which kind of medication or the best antibiotic to suit that particular infection according to the level after the results. So there are specific antibiotics given depending on specific pathogens. For example, uh, bacteria causing infection. Uh, as I said uh, in another video, pathogens are agents which lead to an infection. So, uh, bacteria is a pathogen that can cause neonatal sepsis. So, after you have carried out your laboratory investigations, you are sure what kind of an infection this child is, uh, is having, so you will be in a position to give specific antibiotic according to the laboratory results. Number two, we have intravenous fluids. Such like uh, infants tend to, be, to get dehydrated so faster. So we, we, we need to rehydrate or give them intravenous fluids. Other children also will be having problems in sucking and uh, they will have low blood sugar. So during the intravenous infusion, we can give glucose, for example, dextrosaline, to boost their sugar levels or to boost their energy levels. So this begins as soon as possible to correct the dehydration part of it. Next point, we have a fever medication. Whenever you have a bacterial infection, there must be fever. What is fever? Fever is the hotness or coldness of the, of, 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 the, of the infant. So when the temperatures are high, we need to use antibiotics or fever medications to lower the body temperatures. Number four, we have uh, extra oxygen and respiratory support where possible. If this child is having difficulties in breathing, we can give oxygen to support uh, the breathing system of the child as the child continues its, 
uh, recovery process. Next point we are going to, to, to discuss on now this condition or how neonatal sepsis can be prevented. The first point we are going to talk about is expectant mothers. Expectant mother is a mother who is pregnant and is expecting to give birth or is almost giving birth. So expectant mothers should be treated with intravenous antibiotics before delivery. They should be treated with intravenous antibiotics before delivery. So when you treat this mother before delivery, as you know, the child depends on the mother. So whichever content or whichever treatment the mother gets, it will obviously reach the child through the placenta. So this will help, help the child because it will, will assist in preventing the transmission of the infection from the mother to child, which might lead to neonatal sepsis. The next point is expectant mother should be screened, should be screened and rescreened during antenatal visits. They should be screened and rescreened during uh, antenatal visits for any for any infection to reduce the risk of transmission to the infant. As I have said before, the infant depends for with whichever thing the mother has, it has to be transmitted to the infant. So when the mother is sick, obviously the infant will get sick while still in the uh, uterus or in the abdomen. Next point is that expectant mother should, be, should deliver all delivery should be conducted in a place which is very, very, very clean. Why? Young infants have a low immune system. So when you deliver this mother in a place which is that you are predisposing this child to getting an infection, that can lead to neonatal sepsis. Another point is that overstaying all when the rupture of membranes, when membranes rupture and the mother takes long to deliver, this can lead to an infection or what we call an ascending infection. So when you detect that the time between the rupture of membranes and the uh, delivery of the baby is getting longer, this mother should be taken for cesarean section to avoid uh, transmission of the infection from the outside side to the inside whereby there is a risk of the baby getting the infection and also the mother can get an infection to the uterus. Next point is that newborn uh, newborns should be uh, kept in a clean environment. Once this child has been delivered, the child should be, one, the dressing should be clean and sterilized. And then the child should be kept in a very, very clean environment. As I have said before, the immune system is always low and this predisposes them to getting an infection. So uh, they should be kept in a very, very clean environment as they are vulnerable to infections due to their low immune system. This is the end of our discussion or the end of this video. In our next video, we are going to discuss about the complications of neonatal sepsis or what will happen if this disease is not managed in the right way and at the right time. Guys, I appreciate your support. Uh, continue keeping the support on. Uh, continue sharing, liking, commenting our videos so that they may reach as many people as possible. Goodbye.